dark energy, some mystery, repulsive anti-gravity force that must exist in the universe that will drive the universe to get ever faster in its expansion. When they estimated how much of this dark energy forcing the universe apart there might be, it's a staggering amount. Works out at 68.3% of the energy budget of the universe is dark energy. The rest is physical matter, mass, but of the rest of it, only the orange sector is the stuff that we are made of and that everything we can see is made of. The other 26.8% is this other weird stuff called dark matter. And I have a talk uh, about that. Again, there's a video on YouTube called From the Pendulum to Dark Matter, if you want an explanation of dark matter. We're going to ignore that for now. But you can see that dark energy is by far the dominant form of energy in the whole universe. And so this was a shock and a huge surprise to everyone. But the real question is, what is it? What is this dark energy? And to try and understand that, we have to have a little look at a little bit of quantum mechanic weirdness. And this is the fact that empty space is never really empty. Empty space seethes with short-lived pairs of particles and antimatter particles. They borrow energy from space-time, pop into existence, and then re-annihilate again and pay back the energy that they borrowed from space-time. So the question is, could this be the energy of empty space? Could this be the explanation for dark energy? Well, if it sounds pretty weird, this uh, quantum vacuum effect is real. It's been measured as the Casimir effect and an experiment predicted in 1948. And the experiment's been done. If you hang two metal plates in a vacuum, you get a pressure between them caused by this uh, vacuum energy, the energy of empty space being different between the plates to the uh, amount outside of the plates for weird and complicated reasons to do with the, what wavelengths of radiation can fit between the plates neatly. But it's a real effect and it's been measured and we have to take it into account in uh, some everyday physics as well these days. So uh, this was, as I say, predicted and could be, well, if you're looking for something that causes a, an outward pressure on uh, empty space, this could be a, a candidate. But when we calculate the amount of vacuum energy and try and make it fit with dark energy, because it all sounds fine until you do the maths. What we found was that the pressure from vacuum point energy came out to be too large to account for dark energy by a, pa a factor of 10 with 120 zeros after it. And that's been described as the worst estimate ever in the history of all science. And I think it's an example of where quantum mechanics and general relativity don't like each other very much. So it might still be the explanation, it's just that we might not be getting our maths correct for this one. So how much dark energy is there? I said it was 68% of the total energy budget of the universe. Well, we know from the uh, measurements of the expansion that it's about the equivalent if you talk about it in terms of mass, you can convert energy to mass via E equals mc squared, that famous equation. And roughly it's the same as having 10 to the minus 27 kilograms per cubic meter. And the mass of a proton is about 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms 
So it's about the same as having one proton in every cubic meter of the universe. That's tiny because even the gas between the stars, which is a better vacuum than we can make in any vacuum chamber on Earth, has a million protons in every cubic meter. And so unfortunately, this means it's going to be very, very difficult for us to actually try to measure dark energy in the laboratory. Because uh, if we did manage to make a uh, vacuum that was a million times better than we manage today, we'd still be several million times short of being able to actually measure this one remaining proton. But nevertheless, because this dark energy is everywhere across all of space, it still manages to tot up to that 68% of all the energy budget of the universe. Okay, so now the weird thing that we've noticed, and this is a little bit suspicious, I think, it seems that the acceleration has only started very recently. When the universe was smaller, and all the mass was closer together, gravity would have had a stronger grip and there was less space and so there was less dark energy. As, you, as the universe creates more space, as, as space expands, the amount of dark energy increases and the mass is carried further apart and so its mutual gravity decreases and it looks like uh, the uh, dark energy is going to win eventually for that reason. And so what it appears is that as the expansion continued, gravity looks to have lost the battle with dark energy. Well, round about now, actually, we seem to be at the inflection point. So the destiny of the universe looks like its ultimate fate is this ever quickening expansion of everything that's not already densely packed enough for gravity to win. And so that means that the Milky Way is fine, the Milky Way and the Andromeda galaxy and uh, our friends in the Triangulum galaxy, they're all fine, they're gravitationally bound together and dense enough that dark energy won't win because they, the galaxies will move together and merge and become denser faster than dark energy ever manages to expand. But the rest of the universe will disappear ever more quickly outside our visible horizon beyond the point where light can travel from it to us and be carried away from us faster than the speed of light. So sadly, all of everything that's outside our local group of galaxies is destined to disappear, according to this. But worse still, if you run things further forward, the big rip will occur. Dark energy will eventually become so enormous that it will unbind the galaxy, unbind all the stars from the galaxy, and the Milky Way will fall apart, and they'll all then disappear from each other and then it will unbind the planets from the sun and then eventually it'll unbind the electrons from the atoms and tear absolutely everything apart and this is called the big rip it's one possible destiny of the whole of the cosmos to be torn apart now actually uh, there's a modern theory by Roger Penrose about this that this is a good thing and that once it's happened and all of the matter particles have been torn apart, all you're left with is radiation in an empty universe. And his theory of uh, conformal cyclic cosmology, as it's called, says that that will lead to a new Big Bang. Well, that's a whole other topic. So the question is, is this right? And could the universe be fooling us? Well, since the uh, announcement of the Nobel Prize and the theory of dark energy, one or two things have started to crop up. A supernova study discovered this particular one here, SNLS 03D3BB, in a galaxy far, far away, four billion light years away, and it appeared to go bang with too much mass. Two 
solar masses more than the 1.44 of the Chandra Seker limit. Well, perhaps that particular one isn't a super Chandra Seker event that's breaking the rules because perhaps it was two white dwarfs colliding with each other, each starting with less than the Chandra Seker limit, but combining to produce one that was too much. Well, that's okay, but then there was this one in 2009. And here, the light curve marked at the top there with the little uh, blob all on its own on the diagram, the little black dot, doesn't fit with the light curve of a typical uh, Chandrasekhar event, a typical type 1a supernova. It appears that it was way too bright. And the latest news as of December 2019, Cornell University produced a paper about events like that showing that some supernovae, some type 1a supernovae, vary and the properties of them depend on certain properties of the host galaxy. And in particular, they depend on what they call the metallicity of the original star that went in to form the white dwarf. Now this metallicity is really a measure of how many heavy elements there are in the mix, how much there is that's not the hydrogen and the helium from the Big Bang, and therefore whether it's a second or a third or a fourth generation of stars that have got all the pollutants, the carbon, the nickel, the iron, and the heavy elements that uh, get made in the uh, death of stars. Now that means that there's a bias between older supernovae that couldn't have been formed out of anything except hydrogen and helium out of first generation stars and much more recent ones. And that's what this ch chart over here with the curved lines is trying to show that there's a bias in it, which breaks the standard candle model of type 1a supernovae. And what the worst possible thing is it breaks it over time. So it means that the relationship changes between the distant universe and the modern universe. And it may well be that it changes in just the way to account for the curving of the uh, track implies a shift to uh, a trick you into thinking you've got dark energy when in fact you haven't. So that could be quite exciting news. And there's further new news from the group in Oxford, uh, Paris and Copenhagen collaborating. They looked at a large sample of type 1a supernovae. Now the original study used uh, something like 60 supernovae and got them from two groups, the high Z, the distant ones, the very large redshift ones, and another survey. And that's why that original chart that I show there has some marked in red from the high Z project and some from the super cosmo supernova cosmology project marked in orange that were to some extent, some of them were nearby. But not only were they at different distances, they were actually in different directions on the sky. And the new study has looked at 740 of these exploding white dwarfs and shown that when you look at it, the perceived dark energy acceleration is aligned in one direction. And if you look at right angles to that direction at the supernovae that are off that axis, you don't see the acceleration effect at all. And that that dark energy alignment, that acceleration vector that's shown in blue on the top chart, marked on top of the smoothed cosmic microwave background radiation, appears to point in a direction where there's an asymmetry and where the solar system is moving in that direction anyway. And that gives that red-blue Doppler shift to the 
uh, cosmic microwaves. So it could be that the uh, entire dark energy measurement was an artifact of the fact that the uh, supernovae they were looking at just happened to be aligned fore and aft relative to our direction of motion. And so the universe could be uh, confusing us and there's another third way in which we could be confusing us if our region of space, our local group of galaxies, is a bit light and a bit under dense and that could distort our view. And yet another idea has come up which maybe is that the universe is actually ringing like a bell in its expansion and oscillating. Uh, now that's based on trying to extrapolate the data perhaps a little bit too far. But overall, it, I am becoming very suspicious that this uh, dark energy might not be quite as uh, solid a uh, piece of science as maybe the uh, uh, Nobel Committee thought it was. And uh, well, I don't think they ask for the Nobel Prizes back, but we just got to wait and see. Let's see how this uh, latest round of evidence pans out. So uh, I think the answer to what is the destiny of the universe is, frankly, we just don't know at this point. So.